back at you with another video here for the NBA main site here on Tuesday. I apologize. Uh, last week, missed a couple of uh, video uploads. Um, just was running short on time and did not have time to uh, upload a video, but um, did tweet out plays that I, I liked. So um, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, it is really important to do so. Um, when the off chance I do, I don't upload a video, I will tweet out the plays that I really like. Um, so yeah, this is the lineup I went with for tonight. Um, again, I'm, I just been sticking to GPPs. Uh, so I went with Chris Paul, James Harden. I like this Houston Phoenix team right now, kind of turning into a blowout. Hopefully Phoenix can keep it close. Um, so Aiden plays his full complement of minutes. I went with Mason Plumlee, Otto Porter Jr. as kind of mid-tier value plays. Frazier was was a letdown. That was disappointing. Didn't see as many minutes as I thought he would. Um, you know, what can you do? Sabonis, I did really like him off the bench at 5.5K. I'm um, going against like Julio Okafor, Cheek Diallo, so I did like him. And then Patty Mills at halftime right now has got eight, so a little disappointing there, but I will see. I mean, I think I definitely have a shot of cashing for sure. All right, so let's get into the slate for tonight. So just a brief overview of looking at the slate. It's a pretty interesting one. There's not like really one game that likes like oh man i want to stack that game like, there's no real like really appealing games on the slate um you know boston cleveland there's obviously some blowout risk um charlotte and the hornets uh, or charlotte and the clippers um definitely is um probably one of the more appealing games but um, besides Kemba, it's really hard to trust anyone in that hornets rotation the clippers rotation has kind of been wacky too the lakers indiana um, another uh, pretty appealing um, game um, but Indiana is a pretty solid defensive team. Uh, Detroit, New York, also, I would say, a pretty appealing game. Um, there's some blowout risk, obviously, because New York, uh, pretty bad there. Minnesota, Memphis, I never really like targeting Memphis players um, or people against Memphis. Orlando at OKC, there's obviously some blowout risk there. Toronto, Philly, um, I think it's a sneaky game stack. I don't think a lot of people will be on it. Um, because people, I mean, people theoretically think these both these teams are pretty good defensively, but actually they haven't really been um, that good defensively. They're, both Toronto and Philly have been involved in a lot of high-scoring affairs, and Miami, Portland, um, you know, not really the most appealing game either. So, not a, hot, a whole lot of really stackable games on the slate. So, I think it's going to make it kind of interesting. So, start at the top here at Westbrook, um, eleven four. I think for cash games, you just you know you plug and play them, and you kind of move on. Um, there's obviously some blowout risk here since at OKC, Orlando, obviously not the best team. Um, so GPPs, there's definitely other ways to go. Uh, Lillard at 8.9, uh, not the best match here against Miami, um, but he's all, he's been very up and down. Um, but he obviously has huge upside. Um, I mean, he does take games off, though, too. So um, if Nurkic does miss, I think that, that would be a pretty big boost to Lillard. He would kind of take... Um, more control the offense, shoot, shoot the ball a lot more. So if Nurkic misses, uh, that's a big boost to Dane Lillard. Uh, Kemba, another guy who's just really, really up and down, but uh, this is a great match for you against the Clippers. Um, so I understand he'd probably be the one Hornet that I, I would trust. Um, I think Kemba is a pretty solid player at 8.6. Then you got Ben Simmons, a matchup against Toronto. Again, I think a lot of people are going to be afraid of this matchup. Uh, me, not so much. Like I said, Toronto's been involved in a lot of blowouts here. Or a lot of uh, high-scoring games, I mean. Ben Simmons playing all the minutes he can handle, so I think he's firmly in play here at 8.6. Mike Conley at 8.2. You just never really feel comfortable playing at Mike Conley or Gasol. Uh, but Conley, in the last, what, five games are 42, 48, 48, 49, 54 fantasy points. A pretty solid match against Minnesota, so uh, he looks to be a pretty good, great play. I just can never get any of these Grizzlies right, so I kind of always stay away from him, but I definitely understand um, if you want to play Mike Conley here at 8.2. Lou Williams, again, just the minutes are so up and down for him. Uh, 31, 38, 35, and 21 minutes out of nowhere there. Um, obviously, if he's going to play 30-plus minutes, he's a great play. Um, I think he definitely can take a shot here because um, you know he's a high usage guy off the bench. Um, you know, he's going to jack the ball a lot, so I think Lou Williams is a pretty solid play, and hopefully um, Doc Rivers doesn't play him for 20 minutes randomly out of nowhere. Let's see, Lowry currently listed as doubtful. Um, so that's pretty big. That's going to open up minutes um, for Kyle or uh, for Van Fleet and then also usage boost to all the other starters. Uh, they got Rondo here at 6.8. Playing most of the game. Um, even with LeBron back, 
He's been he's been pretty efficient here. Um, so I have no problem targeting Rajon Rondo. I know Indiana has been a pretty solid defensive team, uh, but I think this actually does. I think this actually is going to be a pretty high scoring game. Lakers don't play a whole lot of defense, um, so I think Rondo is a pretty solid play here at six point eight. Rozier, so obviously we got no Kyrie, um, so the Boston guys are all certainly in play. There is still some bullet risk. Obviously, Cleveland, um, one of the worst teams in the league, but you know it's kind of crazy that Rozier is um, you know the highest you know, Price, Boston, Celtic, that's going to play. Uh, but literally, any Rogier, Horford, Tatum, Morris, Smart, Hayward, Brown, even Daniel Tyson, no Baines, um, that's probably as far as I would go. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, those eight Celtics, definitely you can consider, um, maybe play one or two of them. Um, it's just a great spot here for the, the Cavs. Again, the only concern it really is uh, the blowout risk. Let's see, so Teague. Uh, D. Rose seem like they've been out for a long, long time here. He's listed as doubtful. So we honestly, like, I don't understand what Jared Bayless has done here recently, but you, you have to consider him here at 5.4K. I know the matchup not the best um, against Memphis, but he's playing most of the game, and he's being really productive. I, I honestly don't get it. I don't know where this is coming from. Um, we know Jared Bayless is usually a very low usage guy, but um, he's really played really good basketball here. So, I think he he's definitely in play. Then you got DSJ. His first game um, at the, against the Knicks. Uh, played 26 minutes. Got you 23 fantasy points. Um, you know I would like to, if you would see a few extra minutes. Um, but a 5.7k, I think he is definitely in play. Uh, it is really hard to trust Dave Fizdo, though. You never know what he's going to do with the rotations. Reggie Jackson surprisingly been really really good here. I mean I get it if you want to go there, but we know Reggie Jackson is. It's been so inconsistent. I can never get him right. Uh, this is a prime matchup. He's playing all the mitts can handle, so uh, I'm kind of talking myself into him. He, I mean, it is, it is a great spot. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Cavs. Let me go to Cleveland really quick. So we got, um, obviously, Tristan Thompson out and Love. And, and CD's out as well. Um, so I think the Cavs that are the most interested in, it would be Larry Nance if he picks up the start. Um, I'm going to kind of wait for, for the lineup to come out. If he picks up the start at the power forward position at 5.8K, I might do really like him. Other than that, I mean, it's really hard to trust a lot of these guards. Uh, they're splitting you know, a lot of events, I guess. Probably the one I would have the most interested in would be Jordan Clarkson off the bench here at 5.2K. Okay, let's move on. Let's see. Uh, cheaper guards, D-Wade. Um, I said he's going to play like 25 minutes. He's going to shoot the ball a bunch. Um, 5.2K seems a little underpriced for Dwayne Wade, so I definitely think he is uh, in play. Van Fleet, I think, is a really good play here if Kyle Lowry does miss. Um, played 26 minutes, got just 31 fantasy points. Um, I would guess he would play 30 to 35 minutes in a close game, so I think Van Fleet is a really solid play here if, if uh, Kyle Lowry does miss. Uh, SGA, Pat Beverly. Avery Bradley, I get it if you want to take a shot, but they've just been so up and down. The Mets have been really up and down. Um, I, I mean, I definitely think one of them is going to have a pretty solid game, but it's kind of hard to predict uh, which one's going to be. Uh, DeLon Wright, um, you know, he played 20 minutes, got you 26 fantasy points with no Kyle Lowry. I think he would be in play for salary relief there at 3.8K. would be playing the backup point. Okay, let's move on to shooting guard. Uh, Jimmy Butler here at 7.5. Um, again, I think this game goes pretty low-owned, uh, but a lot of these these Philadelphia starters are playing you know, most of the game here. Um, so I think Jimmy Butler is a pretty solid play here at 7.5. Let's see, Ingram at 5.9. I think he's okay. I mean, he's, the reason why I'm interested in him is he's basically playing the whole game. Obviously, LeBron back uh, hurts him, but... Um, if he's going to keep playing at 40 minutes a game, I think you definitely got to consider him. Let's see, cheaper guards. I mean, Batum, what have the minutes been like? 31, 27, 35, 31. I guess he would be the, the second Hornet I would have interest in, but he really um, it's kind of a shell of his form himself. Um, but I guess, he, I, guess I mean, he would probably be the, the other Hornet I would have interest in.
Let's see. Lance Stevenson here, 4.2. Um, been playing a lot of minutes here, 30 and 24 minutes the last two games. Even with, you know, most of the Lakers healthy. So if he's going to continue to play those minutes, um, I really do like Lance, but it's hard to trust Luke Walton. I think, you know, normally he's going to play 10 to 15 minutes with everyone healthy. So I don't know if we can continue to trust that. Uh, Deion Waiters, uh, you guys know my rule. I, I really don't like playing Miami guys, but 26, 28 minutes the last two games, uh, he really has not shot the ball well. 2 of 10, 1 of 8, 3 of 10. But if he's going to play you know, close to 30 minutes, um, he's going to shoot the ball a lot when he's out there. He definitely has some upside. So if you, you, he, you definitely can consider him. But it's really, really hard to trust anyone on a, you know, Eric Spolster coach team. LeBron here, 10-7. The list is probable. Obviously not the best, best match here against Indiana, but there's not a whole lot um, you know, to really pay up for on the slate. So I think LeBron um, kind of goes low-owned on the slate. So I think... You could play that um, you know, low-owned aspect in GPPs. Paul George, just been having a great year. Um, you know, 63, 57, 67, 53 fantasy points each of the last four games. Prices are all the way up there now to 10.2, but if this game stays close, I think Paul George should have a really good game. Kawhi, um, I do like him a lot. Uh, obviously, if Kyle Lowry does miss, he would be the main man in the offense. Um, 9.3K. Um, he definitely does have a huge upside here, so... Um, I think Kawhi is a pretty solid play. Tobias here at 7.9. 7 um, last couple games, you know, 29, 31 minutes. does concern me a little bit. Um, but I think if this game stays close, he, he pushes for you know, 35 to 40 or so minutes. With no Gallinari still, um, you know, he's the main catalyst in the offense. Um, 7.9K, he seems too cheap there. Aaron Gordon at 6.2. You never feel comfortable playing this guy, but he's playing most of the game. Uh, match not the best, but it's just the price that makes him in play here. Thad Young. Um, I think a lot of these Pacers are definitely in play. Obviously, Oladipo out for the season. Um, Thad Young has kind of been up and down, but with no Oladipo, he's, he's kind of been you know picking up the pace here a bit. Um, so I think he's a pretty solid play here at 6.1. Let's see. Josh Richardson. I think he's okay. I mean, he is... Um, you know, locked into basically 35 minutes a night. Um, you know, not the highest usage guy, but I think he's okay. Tatum, obviously, I think any of those Celtics that I named are certainly in play here against the Cavs. Again, the only concern really is the blowout factor. Winslow also, they're playing some pretty consistent minutes. Um, kind of been up and down though. So, and, and it's again, it's Eric Spolstra. I don't know how many Heat guys I really want to target. Marvin Williams of 4.9, I guess. But do you really feel great, comfortable about playing Marvin Williams? No. Let's see. Other than that, I don't see a whole lot. Um, so I think we can move on here. Yeah, let's move on. All right, power forward. Uh, so Blake, here at 8.8. Again, I'm not really a Blake Griffin or Andre Drummond guy, but um, this is a great match here against the Knicks. Um, so I definitely think you could stack Blake Griffin and Andre Drum Drummond together. Both of them seem too underpriced. Um, so definitely I'm considering both those piston, bi piston bigs here today. Horford, again, uh, like I said, all those Celtics I named off are certainly in play. I definitely think uh, you know, playing a couple of those guys uh, would not be a bad idea at all. Montrez, uh, kind of an up and down, but 6.6K, I think he's firmly in play here against the Hornets. Uh, Siakam. See, how can you Baca, I mean, I, I do really have interest when Kawhi misses. When Kawhi plays, um, I think they're both okay, but not the best of plays. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts with Siakam and Ibaka. Larry Nance, if he picked up a start, I would like him a lot here at 5.8, so we're going to have to kind of wait for news there. Let's see. Sabonis again. You know, I liked him a lot. I played him you know, against the Pelicans. The thing is, is the minutes right now, they're kind of limiting like 20, maybe 25 minutes. So that is the concern. You know, I liked it a lot more when he's playing close to 30 minutes a night. But the price tag here, 5.6K, he is definitely in play. I like playing those high usage guys off the bench. Let's see, Noah Vonla, Detroit plays big, so I think um, he would play a few extra minutes. But he he has some foul trouble issue. The Knicks, bigs, kind of getting healthy. They got Cornette, Mitchell Robinson, Cantor. Um, so I don't know if I want if I really, really want to target any of those Knicks, bigs. 
So Kali Olenek. If we can trust Eric Sprosa, uh, 23, 31, and 34 minutes each of the last three games. If he's going to continue to play those type of minutes, then you just got to lock and load him. But we've seen this before. You know, I've targeted Kelly Olenek after playing 30 minutes, and Spolstra, Spolstra just played him like five minutes the next night. So it is really, really hard to trust Eric Spolstra. You never know what he's going to do, but it seems likely that Kelly Olenek is going to play a decent amount of minutes. So I like him if he's going to do it. But again, proceed with caution. Um, you never can trust Eric Spolstra. Okay, oh, so the Portland bigs, uh, Zach Collins and Miles Myers Leonard would definitely be in play if um, you know Nurkic does miss again. Um, Collins and Myers Leonard, I would like a lot as value plays. So the center position here, uh, Embiid at ten point five. Uh, you know, all these like the main the main guys in Philly, you know, Embiid, Butler, Simmons, playing all the minutes they can handle. Um, the matchup will probably be going up against Ibaka. Um, you know, it's not the best matchup, not the worst matchup. Um, so I think Embiid is is pretty okay here. Cat's uh, gonna be going against Marcus Saul. Um, I understand if you want to do it. I think they're pretty low owned, um, but I'm personally gonna go elsewhere. Vucevic, I love playing Vucevic, but definitely has some blow risk here. I do respect the defense of Steven Adams, so I'm probably not gonna look his way. Again, these two, the two Detroit bigs. It's always hard to trust Detroit, but this is a great spot for both of these guys. Uh, so Drummond, Blake Griffin, um, you definitely got to consider both of them. Nurkic here at 8.1. Um, we haven't had, heard word yet if he's going to be um, play or not. Um, if he plays, I think he would be okay um, going against this on white side. If he misses, then it's Myers Leonard and Zach Collins as really good value plays. Gasol, I just can't. I just can never get him right. I finally played him here against Charlotte. He played 26 minutes, got me 22 fantasy points. Uh, I just can never get these Memphis guys right. I understand, obviously, Conley, Gasol, if you want to play both those guys. But me, personally, I'm just not going to go that way. White side here, if Nurkic misses, I think he could feast going up against the likes of Myers Leonard and Zach Collins. It's just the minutes been so up and down, 24, 15, 20, 31. It's just, it's an Eric Spolster coach team. You never know, but I think Whiteside and GPPs is a great play. Cash games, I just don't think you can do it. Miles uh, Turner here. Um, any of these Pacers, starters, Turner, um, you know, Thad Young, even Bogdanovich. I don't really like playing scoring, scoring dependent guys, but he would be in play. Collison, obviously, uh, Corey Joseph. Um, all these in, uh, Indiana starters, and a great match for against the Lakers. I think all those guys are pretty solid plays here. Steven Adams. You know, doesn't really have the most upside in the world, but 6.2K just seems too cheap for him. Um, so I think he's pretty solid play there for cash games. Um, DeAndre Jordan here, obviously Detroit plays big. Um, so I think DeAndre Jordan um, going to be asked to play um, some pretty decent minutes. Obviously, they got Vonla, they got Cornette, they got Cantor, they got Mitchell Robinson. They have a lot of bigs right now, um, New York does. So um, probably... DeAndre Jordan would be the one of the most interesting, but again, they have so many bigs right now. Let's see, McGee, Zubak, um, one of those guys I think could have a pretty solid game here against Indiana. Indiana does run big. Um, you know, probably would prefer Zubak, but um, I don't know. I think they're. I think both those guys are okay. Valanciunas, um, what's his doubtful? Okay, so they don't think he's gonna play. Um, let's see. Cody Zeller. I said he's going to be back. Um, if he's not going to be limited here at 4K, I like him a lot. Um, if he's going to have a minutes limit, then I'll probably stay away. So that's kind of news we have to kind of wait for. And yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, so where's Myers Leonard really quick? Uh, yeah, so Myers Leonard at 3.5K. Um, him and Zach Collins would just be great value plays if Nurkic misses, so we're going to kind of have to wait for news there. So yeah, I think that's going to do it for today's video. So the slate, again, pretty interesting. Um, not a whole lot of really appealing games, but there's definitely um, a lot of different ways you can go. Um, so I think it's a pretty solid slate.
Uh, so yeah, like I said, I think that's new for today's video, guys. If you have been enjoying the content, please like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave in the comment section down below. It's also important to follow me on Twitter. That will be in the description below. Get my thoughts and more news comes out throughout the day. And I'll be back for another video um, on Wednesday. So I'll see you guys then.